This is Johannesburg, E. Jonas Peggy, as the migrants call it, E. Goli as well, the place of gold. The migrants came from Natal mainly, and some from Zululand, and they came to Johannesburg, and they brought with them their language, their music, which was influenced by the language and music in Johannesburg. two experiences met and melded and formed something which is entirely new and something which is entirely unique and it is this cultural tradition this the, the migrants worker culture in the city that Chiluka uses as its musical base and it's from this experience and here that I met Sipa <laughs> My story begins with a meeting with a white man. I am a migrant worker from Zululand. Like my migrant worker brothers, I left my wives and my children at home and came to the city to wrestle a livelihood for myself and my family. In the city, I had to make another life for myself. I lived two lives. When I arrived, I heard there was a white man singing Zulu. I found him. Johnny and I have been together now for 14 years and I've taught him many things about the Zulu guitar, stick fighting and especially the dance. <laughs> Chuluga, the word means sweat. This is 13 West Street in Houghton. It's a place I used to work before for 12 years as a gardener. So this is the place where Sipo taught me a lot more about Zulu guitar and stick fighting. Before Johnny could learn about the body in the dance, he had to learn about the body in stick fighting. The dance holds the key to understanding many aspects of my people's life. The rhythm of the Zulu language, of the stick fighting, of the dance, all influence the form and content of Zulu music and the kind of sounds we use in Chuluga's music. The Zulu language is rich in expressive sounds that we use to describe actions and activity. When these are put together rhythmically by Jaluga, they enable us to say things in a way that has not been done before. Our music describes our experiences. As we say in Zulu, which means our music bears witness to our life. Saga, exactly. I'm sitting here at, uh, at Wemo Hostel. This is where it all began for me and Sipo. 
I was 16 years old, and he had just come up from Durban to find work. And he came to my flat. He heard that there was this white Zulu boy who was playing Zulu street guitar music. And he looked me up, and we became very good friends. And he introduced me to his dancing team, which danced at Wemma Hostel. I always wanted to be able to come inside the hostel, but I couldn't get into the hostel because uh, one required a permit. But uh, after befriending some of the black municipal police around the area, they allowed me in. And uh, I remember when I first came in through the front entrance, there were young boys selling offal, roasting offal on the side. Uh, stolen goods could be bought. People practicing dancing, music, radios, incredible sound, incredible color. The dance team that I was to join sent out about 10 fellas dressed in their, their dancing gear to take me in so that I, I, I didn't feel insecure. And they took me to a room, very dark, very dingy. And when I walked in, all the beds had been upturned and put against the wall. And there were 60 dancers sitting hunched up, one inside the other like this, all along. And there was dead silence and I walked in and uh, they gave me a name immediately. They called me Mordem Loom. I was very short, but they called me Tall White Man. Here, I saw a very strange thing unfold before my eyes. I saw a people who had come from the rural area, who had come from basically a, a tribal base, uh, bring some of their tribal culture into the town and take some of the town culture and mix this up into such a fantastically unique culture. Um, that, uh, that I found that I, I wanted to learn a lot more about it all the time. The dance, for me, was the most important expression of all the different musical forms that you could find in, in, the, in the migrant worker co hostel compound. This is all part of their struggle, to try and make a meaning in the world that they were confronting. It was part of their struggle, uh, trying to make some kind of shield in the city. And uh, the dance, as I said before, was pivotal in making the shield, giving you some kind of courage, some kind of uh, process of psychological and psychic reconstitution where you'd be able to be a man. And every weekend after that, that, that five days that you'd work through, Friday, Saturday, we'd have a practice, and on Sunday would be the big day, and we'd dance. When Monday came, you felt you were strong again, you could face it. And what, what Wemma shocked me into, it shocked me into seeing, seeing things that other people don't see, learning to look for things, learning to follow through um, discoveries. For me, this thing became very, very serious. It was a very serious discovery I had made. It was something which had to be documented, it was something which had to be uh, shown. And the only way that I could do it, because I was a musician, that's what I am, was to sing about it. And so Sipa and myself began to 
write and sing about the hostel life and just the migrant worker culture in Johannesburg. And apart from dancing on Sundays, I would come here with Sipo and we would get involved in competitions, guitar competitions. And uh, very informal, no prizes, just to meet some other guys who are good at the guitar and we'd play and it would be very nice. And what uh, later on would happen is that we would walk around the streets together with maybe five or six of us and uh, put together this incredible cacophony of street music uh, on a Sunday afternoon. He sorrow his smile, and he sowed his songs Through the alleyways, mile upon my ear It's really hard to believe that I'm back here again and the place is so empty and quiet. I remember I can hear the voices, I can hear the shouts, I can see the people hanging up their overalls and their socks and their washing, sitting in the sun, smoking, talking. And the silence is very oppressive in a way like these buildings. As I said, when my hostel is now closed, these migrant workers have been moved to other hostels or have gone home. Only their bed numbers remain. Who is 2362 or 2368? And where are they now? Wema was also where I saw the first violence within the hostel complex. I saw people being beaten with sticks. I saw the inmates themselves very frustrated at their living conditions, very frustrated at the money they were earning, those kinds of things, uh, take it out on each other. And um, as a young schoolboy as well, that, 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 that really made a, a deep and lasting impression on me. The song Bullets for Bafazani attempts to capture the violence and the frustration that um, the hostile life gives rise to, and this is in the form of feuding and faction fighting. And uh, Bafazan is uh, our roadie, and he, he was at one stage in fear of his life, being hunted down by an assassination squad from another district. Oh, it's the sky up above that he loves, cause he's the... Go, oh, it's a sky up above that he loves Cause he's still alive and for him that's enough Oh, it's a sky up above that he loves Cause he's still alive and for him that's enough Oh, my mama, mama, mama gonna get me, get me I'm not gonna let them get me, get me, yeah
Even though Bafaza and escape to his life, the story is never ending. The migrant worker culture flourishes in the little back streets and hostels in Johannesburg and other major cities. Under the flyover in Anderson Street in Johannesburg, at a place called Mai Mai, every day you can see the vans being loaded to return people to the other home and bring others to the city. We say in Zulu, go come Zimba silently see you, which means body grow old, heart remain behind. Given these incredible hardships, given this endless struggle to make a living in the world, the thing that really is fascinating is the incredible humor, the incredible color, and the incredible music that these people developed. This, the music of the migrant workers is their own music. This concertina, for example, sells for 60 rand in a shop. But in order for, for a migrant to play it, he has to take it to another migrant whose job it is to change the notes around into the Zulu pentatonic scale because they conceive and conceptualize this instrument in such a unique way that, that the notes have to be changed around. It's like a little soul. It breathes. It struggles to get its notes to be heard. Heard are the notes that cry and bend and say, we will be heard. The concertina is the musical symbol of the migrant worker's existence. For me, also as a young boy, it was this incredible contradiction, this contrast between this gritty, hard, sweaty struggle and its expression in the humor, the constant joking, the dancing, and the music.
the Um Zanzi style, every movement in the dance has a meaning. The placing of the kicks, the stems, and the quality of the dancer's performance tell the story of that man's claim to manhood. Dance brings the fragmented striving of the migrants together, and the philosophy of the dance is that the dancers should work as one, like spanned oxen pulling together. It stresses the sacrifice of the ego and the individual to the collective celebration of brotherhood and manhood. Jaluka symbolizes exactly that the white ox and the black ox pulling together in celebration. Rain falls talking to the dragon on the mountain. Stars infest the heavens and the southern skies. Otters swim against the river, whisper in the water. The stars are dead, and what you see are shining lights. Body smoke tie the night in a misty web of blue. Simple things are all we have left to trust. An apple, a horse, some milk, and a little bread will help time stop slipping through our fingers. Things are all we 